Hello folks, I'm Cooper, and today on Cooking with Cleavers, we're talking about bombshell knives. So before me, I have seven knives that are made by a company called uh, Jin He Lin Gang Dao, or Maestro, uh, which is their English name. But these Maestro knives are knives made from repurposed steel that was originally uh, artillery shells and bombs uh, dropped on Jinmen Island. Uh, which is a part of Taiwan, the Republic of China. Uh, so these, this Maestro company dates back to World War II uh, when a industrious Chinese uh, native of uh, Jinmen uh, was living there during uh, a bombardment of uh, Jinmen by the Allies, the United States. Because Jinmen and Taiwan and most of the coast of China was at that time controlled by the Imperial Japanese Army. Uh, so the United States was bombing the Japanese on Jinmen, uh, and during that wartime, uh, the residents of Jinmen had very few resources, uh, especially steel. Uh, so the industrious founder of Maestro uh, started to gather bombshell fragments uh, and remains of bombs dropped by the United States and forging them into tools and knives uh, like these. Uh, so World War II ended, the source of bombs uh, dried up, but never fear, uh, Jinmen would have multiple more conflicts to supply them uh, with artillery. Uh, unfortunately for Jinmen, it became the center of uh, the continued uh, Chinese civil war between the Republic of China, the Kuomintang under Chiang Kai-shek, and the People's Liberation Army, the Communist Chinese Party, and the People's Republic of China. The communists on mainland under Mao Zedong, uh, basically right after World War II, those two fact, um, Mao Zedong's and Chiang Kai-shek's uh, parties uh, began or really restarted their civil war and Chiang Kai-shek was driven off mainland China uh, to Taiwan, but re he retained control of Jinma Island which being right next to mainland China became the focal point for uh, basically all of the actual hot wars or more hostilities that had uh, casualties and actual military uh, conflict. So Jinmen Island uh, after 1949 becomes the center of the conflict between uh, Chiang Kai-shek's uh, Republic of China, Taiwan, and Mao Zedong's uh, People's Republic of China. Uh, Jinmen had several tens of thousands of uh, Republic of China soldiers on it, uh, and multiple attempts were made by the People's Liberation, the communist military, to invade uh, Taiwan, or invade Jinmen, uh, and drive the Republic of China military out. Um, during this time, artillery shelling and bombardment was a major part of the conflict. Uh, really, only a couple of times did the People's Liberation Army actually attempt to get soldiers onto Jinmen to invade. Uh, one of the instances is 1958, um, where they had m more major hostilities. But other than that, uh, there was sustained artillery barrage of the island. Uh, where several hundred thousand to millions of artillery shells were dropped on uh, the small islands of Jinmen. Um, this lasted decades, essentially. Most of these artillery shells were not like high explosive artillery shells. They were actually propaganda shells uh, attempting to win the hearts and minds uh, of the Jinmen people and the soldiers stationed on Jinmen. So, needless to say, there's hundreds of thousands to millions of these artillery shells, most of them propaganda shells, dropping leaflets and music or food or whatever the uh, communists at the time were using to try to win over the Jinmen people. Uh, and propaganda artillery shells have the benefit of not exploding, they just drop stuff out of them. Uh, so, uh, there were 
hundreds of thousands of these steel um, artillery shells that would land on Tienmen and this Maesharu company had previous experience repurposing steel uh, so this became a great source of steel for their knives. To this day they're still using uh, those artillery shells uh, to source steel for their knives uh, and the steel for these knives is uh, actually pretty good. Um, it's generally fairly hard for a cheap Chinese uh, steel uh, which makes it useful for knives uh, and all of these knives uh, are uh, at least reported to be made from bombshell steel. Uh, so if you go to Jinma now they have factories or they have shops on Jinma uh, that uh, sell these knives and in the back they'll have a small forge uh, where they have a few guys who magically start working when tourists walk in and stop working when tourists walk out. Uh, so they have forged just to show how these knives were originally forged. All the knives now are made in a factory so you don't actually get to see them being forged. Uh, lots of tourists uh, mistakenly think that the knives that are sold in the shop are the knives that they're watching people make in the back. That's not true. Uh, it's, they, they just have the guys in the back to show how knives were once made uh, and make people think that that's how they're doing it today. But you can actually ask them and they'll straight up tell you that all, all these knives that I bought were made in a factory. It's on Jinmen and they still repurpose uh, or th they still use the artillery shells as a source for steel. Uh, but uh, don't be fooled uh, or whatever by the tourist attraction of the blacksmiths in the back forging knives. It's not how it's made. Uh, but uh, Maestro has a whole, a huge lineup of knife offerings, uh, all made from artillery shell steel, bomb shell steel. Uh, I have two of the handle types, uh, a wood handle, their G series, uh, and a more western style uh, imitation wood, it's plastic handle. Uh, this is their D series. Um, they've got a whole assortment of kitchen knives. You have carving knives and fruit knives. You can get uh, Western style chef's knives, uh, various sizes of Chinese slicing cleavers and different profiles of the Chinese slicing cleavers and uh, heavier bone cleavers and things. They also have it uh, multiple uh, knives in a Damascus steel, so a layered uh, steel. Uh, they've got pocket knives, they've got outdoors knives. All of them are made from this stainless steel from the artillery shells. Maestro knives all come packaged in uh, fairly nice um, boxes that are clearly labeled as Maestro and have uh, English uh, on the front with a story of uh, the company, the inside, uh, has some Chinese also explaining um, the history of the company uh, and whatnot. Uh, but uh, these knives, the, the Maestro company has been in existence since 1937, uh, still through to this day making knives from bombshell steel. If you have a chance to go to Jinmen Island, uh, in the Republic of China, Taiwan. Uh, make sure to stop by the gift shop and pick up a knife or two. Um, these knives are very much so uh, tourist attraction knives uh, designed for souvenirs. Uh, honestly, these were the first knives I got in the Chinese slicing cleaver variety. Uh, and I clearly bought several, I uh, got a nice set of matching knives for my kitchen before I got really into knives uh, and realized that these are very expensive comparatively to other knives you can get, uh, especially in Taiwan. Uh, so if you go uh, get a souvenir or two, you probably don't need to get a bunch. They're more expensive than th they need to be. For example, uh, this knife uh, in their G series, I believe costs 1500 NTD, so 45 to 50 US dollars. Uh, whereas, say, this knife, a uh, 
uh, Chen Long Bi is also a Taiwanese made uh, Chinese slicing cleaver, which happens to be significantly larger. Uh, this costs about 15 or 16 US dollars, like 450 or 500 NTD. Uh, so uh, these are definitely more so touristy knives, uh, but they're pretty cool. You can also get them in the United States uh, at uh, rather inflated prices, I think. Uh, this model costs something like $120 on Amazon. Uh, this is a D11. Uh, you can also get them on Jende, Jenda. I'll put a link into it to the website that you can get them in in the United States, but fairly expensive, probably not worth it unless you want to get a cool bomb shell. The quality is pretty good. They look nice. Uh, not excellent uh, quality. Uh, the blades on this, the blade on this example uh, actually uh, bends. The blade itself is straight, but when it was joined to the handle, it actually has a bend to the left um, and things like that, uh, which are not the highest of quality control things. But again, it's a functional knife. It works fine. Nobody would really notice it. Uh, but not so much worth uh, three times the price of, say, this knife, which is potentially more functional um, and has a better blade profile, in my opinion. Uh, but these are bombshell knives uh, made by Maestro. Uh, if you have a chance, uh, pick one up. Uh, probably the best bet is to go to Jinmun itself. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're interested in learning about uh, more Chinese style knives or knives in general, but especially Chinese slicing cleavers, uh, stay tuned. Uh, I'll be uploading more reviews of specific Chinese slicing cleavers and other knives, as well as tutorial videos uh, on how to use them uh, and informational videos like this one uh, about uh, cool histor histories of uh, Chinese slicing cleavers, Chinese knives, uh, and all the knives I own. Uh, so please stay tuned uh, by subscribing and hitting the notification bell. If you like this video, uh, please like it and share. Thank you very much.